Hey there, this is my fourth installment in Why So Many Guitars Acoustic Edition. And this is the fourth acoustic guitar that I ever got. I don't remember the year that I got it. It's a, it's a Martin D35. It's a 70s Martin D35. And um, the path to this guitar was one of, of, of doing a session and um, working with a producer I'd never worked with. Actually, the producer was a good friend and I'd worked with a hundred times, but the engineer I'd never worked with before and he was a little bit skeptical because he'd never heard of me before, he'd never um, seen me play before, and uh, I think he was just kind of giving me rookie, rook, a rookie hard time and uh, kind of a little bit of initiation. But um, I was at the session, it was an, uh, for a major um, Latin artist, and um, the, uh, in fact, uh, the, I sat down on the sofa and I introduced myself to the artist and I didn't know who he was and uh, he introduced himself as the artist that I was hired to work with and that's when I realized I need to Google these people so I know what they look like before I go to these sessions. Anyway, uh, he was totally cool, but the engineer was not and he said, hey, let me hear your guitar and I pulled out the dove and he goes, that's too bright. And I said, oh, okay. And I pulled out the loud knowing it probably wasn't going to be any darker. And the loud, and he goes, no, that's even brighter. I knew that. And all I had left at that point was the, um, was the Taylor, which I knew was also kind of a bright guitar. So I pulled that out, and he was like, no, no, you have anything darker than those? And I didn't. Um, so we did the session. I mean, I, it wasn't that big a deal, I don't think, because you've got EQ. You can always turn down the treble on the microphone, or you can move the mic. I mean, I move the mic all the time to get different tones. It's a radical difference from, you know, from the 12th fret to the to the body of the guitar. And so, he, I'm sure it was, it turned out, the record turned out fine, it was no problem. But it set me on my quest for a darker instrument. And so I started um, going to guitar stores and just playing as many acoustics as I could, looking for a darker one, and I kind of came to the conclusion, you know, I need to probably get a Martin. I don't have a Martin. I've got a Taylor and I've got a Gibson. And a Loudon, which is more of a kind of a boutique kind of guitar, um, so I thought, well, I should get, I should get a, uh, a, a Martin Dreadnought. So I played a bunch, and then at Guitar Center in Pasadena, there was this thing hanging on the wall. And it was, it was only $1,100. And I'm like, that's really cheap for Martin. I pulled it down, and I started playing it, and it played great. And it sounded great. I'm like, what's wrong with this guitar? And I looked closer at it, and I found out. For one thing, the pickguard, which is starting to come away again, was really bubbly. Like, this thing was sitting out in the sun, or it was locked in a car, or whatever, I'm not sure. The, the guitar had been turned into a left-handed instrument and back into a right, because the, the uh, bridge was routed out, and you can see, you can't see it on the video, I'm sure, but it was um, set for a lefty angle, and then filled back in, rerouted, and set back for a right. Also, I noticed... I think after I bought the guitar that a chunk of the, um, the, you know, the trim around the fretboard was uh, repaired. Um, and, you know, I don't know what else is done to this. The neck looks original, you know. Everything about it is, is, is pretty spot on. It's, a, it's a, a D35, which someone told me that the, three, the 35 comes from the fact that it's got three pieces in the back. I'm not sure what, if that's what the three means, but... Because um, a 28, an H, a D28, is a two-piece back. So uh, a 35, generally I've noticed that's true though, that it's a three-piece back. And a uh, spruce top. And this thing just, I've used this a thousand times. This thing is my go-to acoustic guitar. Um, I've had it refretted. It's about time for another one. That's how much I played it. And I, when I had it refretted, I went ahead and had the standard Martin frets put in it because I really want it to sound like a Martin. And I'll tell you, the, the truth about this guitar is um, that it's, it's on, on tape, I, I, noticed, and I noticed when I would play with, a, like, say, a singer on a record or whatever, that, uh, you know, the guitar wasn't usually as hot as I would have liked it. I mean, you know, they could turn it up a little bit, but the, the Taylor, the Loudon, and the Dove all have a very distinctive tone. And I kind of was feeling like, well, maybe it's, it's they're... It's a little too distinctive and kind of um, competing with the vocalist. And the, I'm thinking the engineers are maybe thinking the same thing because I got this guitar and this just, to me on tape, this thing just sounds like a guitar. 
I mean, I could tell it's a Martin, but to me, it just sounds like a guitar. And it's the, you know, Martins are played from the beginning of time, practically. And so when you hear, you know, Bob Dylan, or you hear Johnny Cash, or you hear acoustic guitar, you know, uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Neil Young, all, you, so often you're hearing Martins. And so when I play this thing, it just sounds like a guitar. It doesn't necessarily register as a Martin. It just registers as a guitar. And I found that the tracks that I play this guitar on, the guitar is a little bit more balanced, I feel like, with the vocal because it's not really competing. The vocal sits really nice on top of this guitar. Uh, so that's a really good guitar to have if you have a guitar that really will sound good with a vocalist. And so I've, uh, I've been playing this guitar for, I think I got this uh, probably about 12, year, 12 years ago. It's been about 12 years that I've had this guitar, and I've, got, I've gotten a couple other Martins that I'm going to show them to you. Uh, but this one kind of rounded out the, the, the four of them. I've, I feel like I have a much more sonic... And see, to, to kind of bounce back to the first video, I would never played acoustic guitar before. I never owned one. I didn't get my first one until I was 30. And so I really didn't know what I was listening for and what I was looking for. And now, all, you know, 25 years later, I can really hear a difference between all these different acoustics. Um, I can hear differences when I hear acoustic guitars on the, on the radio, and, and I can go, oftentimes can peg it as a Gibson or a Martin. Sometimes I can tell if it's a Taylor. That's harder to tell. Um, but it's it's really it's really interesting how you can start to start to hear these things when you start to get familiar with the instrument. And so that's part of the reason why so many guitars, because you need to have a bunch of them to have these these different sonic. Uh, to fill different sections of the sonic landscape. And a lot of times I'll double guitar parts, uh, you know, for left and right, and I'll do diff two different guitars. I'll do a Martin and a Gibson or a Taylor and a G Martin or whatever. And that will allow this, you know, it'll give the producer options. They can either choose one or the other, or they can use them both and pan them left and right. And um, that's always a good thing to do, is always to give producers and engineers and composers options. And that's what I aim to do when I... Uh, you know, show up at a session, especially if it's an acoustic session, I'll show up with three or four guitars. Uh, my guitar teacher back in the 80s, a guy named Carl Verheyen, a very amazing guitar player, uh, he once told me, and this is before I even owned one acoustic, and uh, I was just thought of myself as an electric player, he told me he had a dozen acoustics, and I was like, a dozen acoustics? Why? And he goes, you can't have too many acoustics. He was trying to explain to me, and I just didn't get it. Well, now I, I, I get it, and now I have, I don't think I have a dozen yet, but... Um, I really do try to hold on to I, all my acoustics. I, I really have no interest in selling them because um, I feel like if if I don't want to use it right now or this time or this year even, there may come a time a year from now where I just really am jonesing for the sound of that instrument. Um, I'm certain that's true with the loud. The loud kind of comes and goes out of favor with my ears. Even the, even the, the tailor is that way. Sometimes I just I love it. And sometimes I'm just like, no, that's not the instrument. Give me the Martin. So uh, anyway, that's. That's uh, this is the fourth edition. This is my fourth acoustic, a Martin D thirty five seventies. I don't know what year it is. Um, I tried to look it up. It's mid seventies, and uh, not uh, not not vintage per se. But I guess seventies is vintage now. But it's not like it's a pre war. <laughs> okay. God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon.